Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again, and today we're going to be asking the age-old question, why does everybody love Twisted Metal Black? So let's get right into it. Right off the bat, I'm just going to say, if you haven't seen my other videos on Twisted Metal 2 and 3 and 4 of this series, I do go into my own personal feelings and opinions on these games, but I want to make it absolutely clear that these are just opinions. They are not fact, and I'm not saying you guys are wrong if you think otherwise. For me personally, I actually am a fan and I love Twisted Metal Black, and I'm going to be going over the good and the bad of the game in my personal opinion. And with these videos, I like to start out with the bad. And before we do start out with the bad here, like always with this series, I would like you guys in the comment section below to give me one reason as to why you love Twisted Metal Black. And of course, if you're on the other spectrum and you dislike this game, give me one reason why you do. And let's have a very healthy discussion in the comments. What's no, no fighting here. Nobody is right and nobody is wrong. But yes, with that, going into the bad, the first thing that I think everybody comes to the same conclusion of, even if you're a huge fan of Twist Metal Black, including like myself, we all have to agree the bland color palette does get old really fast. Obviously, I understand it's called Twisted Metal Black. It's meant to be very serious. It's meant to be gory and horror-esque. And I understand why they use a lot of dark browns and blacks and grays, but it really does tend to wear down on you only after a couple matches. So it just would have been nice to see a little bit more variety throughout the tournament, maybe a couple levels that would have been a little bit brighter color palettes, just to give us a little bit more of a refresher in terms of the atmosphere. Kind of bouncing off of that as well, for some people, it just is way too dark and serious. Especially coming from Twist Metal 2, which was very campy and in a lot of ways lighthearted. Yes, it had some dark humor in there, of course, but it was nowhere near serious. So going from that to Twist Metal Black is a huge whiplash experience, and for a lot of people, it just turned them off. Some of the stories might kind of blend together over time, because a lot of them have to deal with the same revenge plot, and that can get boring. I mean, I will say some of the stories are some of my favorite in the entire series in this game, and that is definitely the case however it is true that a lot of them are straight up just this guy did me wrong and my wish is to get revenge on them and yeah that can get kind of boring after a while the overly aggressive ai makes a return and they of course just like every other game that david jaffe and scott campbell have worked on they just straight up special spam you like crazy whenever you're around them and that can get kind of annoying and we all have the same issues with tm1 and tm2 so coming to twist metal black it really is sadly no different Another big issue with the aggressive AI is, in a lot of ways, you just feel like it's one man versus eight other opponents every single level. It doesn't feel like you're in a legit tournament where everybody is against everybody. If you're too far away from enemies, you're never going to see them actually fighting each other when you're not around. They're just going to be going around in circles, waiting for you to come back so they can special spam you or freeze spam you again. And yes, it is pretty apparent in Twisted Metal Black. The very first level in the tournament can be pretty difficult for new players and turn off a lot of people. I have witnessed this firsthand. I have a lot of friends IRL that I tried to get them in Twisted Metal, and I do think Twisted Metal Black is a great one to start out with to really throw somebody into the shark, so to speak, to get them used to the gameplay, and in my opinion, play one of the better games in the series. But it is very apparent that the first level in the tournament just is way too difficult for new players. Going against like eight opponents right off the bat on a very yeah, relatively difficult level in terms of visibility and weapon pickups and all that stuff, it is really interesting they chose Zorko Bros as the first level. Even though I absolutely love it myself, I will say, I can understand 100% why some people might think this is a little bit too hard for a first level in the tournament. Health pickups give you literally next to nothing, which just feels unfair. Yes, there are the health bridges, which they brought back from Twist Metal 1, which I also am not a huge fan of, to be honest with you. But that being said, they at least have those, so you can get full health if you do find those around the level. But on the other side, they also brought back regular health pickups like we had in Twisted Metal 2, and it's good to see them return. However, when you grab them, they literally give you almost no health anyway. So <laughs> it's really just a, a big letdown. Whenever you see one in the distance, you're like, yes, I can finally get out of the red on my health bar. You go up and run and grab it, and it gives you like maybe 5% more health. And it just, yeah, they could have definitely given you more. And speaking of health, the health bars may seem a bit too small in general, and you can die really quickly in this game, especially if you're playing a weaker armored vehicle. 
So I do feel they should have gone the route of TM three and four, which gave you a lot more health to begin with. Yes, it made the gameplay sort of slow down a little bit because you had a lot more chances to survive and get away and go get health and come back to the action. But I do think it would have made the difficulty a little less severe for most people. Boss battles, in my opinion, are very lackluster. There's only two in the entire tournament, which is fine. We have the typical minion battle halfway through, and then we have the new Warhawk final battle. Warhawk is an ambitious final battle, I will admit that. I think it was an interesting design to have a helicopter be the final boss and not like Dark Tooth or something again. However, I am just not a fan of Warhawk at all. I've been notorious for saying this on my channel. I don't think helicopters or planes or whatever should be in Twisted Metal in general. And Warhawk is just a very unfair boss if you're new to the game. Like the first few times you go against him, there's absolutely no hints as to what you're supposed to do. It's just this flying vehicle that's constantly shooting at you. It has a shield, so you can't do any damage to you. And on top of that, there's these mini minions, basically, coming out from everywhere, shooting you with these flamethrowers and doing massive amounts of damage, and that's it. You eventually do understand, you just destroy the minion, or the mini minions, I should say. They explode and do damage to the shield of Warhawk. Do that three times, and now you can fight him normally. But even so, he's still up in the air, and unless you cheese him, which, by the way, you can just go sit in the middle of the level, he'll come float down so close to you that now you can actually hit him with any weapon in the game. Unless you do that, most, if not 90% of the weapons and specials in this game cannot even reach him, which is just bogus. So yeah, Warhawk, even if you can cheese him really easily like I can nowadays, he's just a boring boss. He's just a stupid, boring boss. And including Minion too. He's not terrible, but I just hate the shield aspect. The fact you have to destroy these panels all around him to, to get rid of the shield, and now you can finally fight him like a normal boss. It just feels cheap, unwarranted, and it's just unfair difficulty. I guess that's kind of the overall arching theme of any of these games created by David Jaffe and Scott Campbell, is the difficulty just doesn't seem to be fair for the player. The level design can be boring for some, I will admit that. I personally don't have much issues with many of the levels in Twist Metal Black. I think for the most part they flow pretty well, but I can understand for most people they can be a little too big or just not enough going on in them and with the color palette on top of that can make them kind of boring. But talking about levels, Prison Passage and Drive-In Theater are just too difficult for their own good. Drive-In Theater just can eat a dick. There's barely any health pickups, there is no health bridge at all on the level, and it's so small, there's just nothing going on. It's just eight enemies in this very small circle. Good luck, basically. And yeah, I hate that kind of design. And Prison Passage, it has some cool features to it. It essentially opens up to three different maps. If you look at it that way, it starts out in a tiny little arena versus two enemies, opens up to a bigger arena on a giant ship versus like four enemies. And then it opens up to the giant Prison Passage, which goes against like eight enemies total. So... I do like that aspect of it, it adds some variety to the game, and it really does feel like a massive battle, but it sticks out like a sore thumb, and it's too difficult, and it takes way too long to complete, for my personal opinion. Like, once you've done multiple playthroughs of this game, this becomes the level that you dread the most, and yeah, I'm just not a fan. Most of the weapons in the game don't seem to do much damage to the enemies, versus when they shoot those same weapons back at you, they do a massive amount of damage, and that can be very apparent in most cases, and that's where I feel like it's a little bit artificial in terms of the difficulty, no matter which difficulty you play on. Freeze missiles always fucking miss. I don't know why. <laughs> Just <laughs> for some reason in this game, freeze missiles are too slow, and they barely home in at all on the enemy, and they're going to miss like 80% of the time. I'm not a fan of the charging bridges, like I said before, that return from TM1. I just find it really annoying when you're coming up. Let's say you're coming from the side, so now you have to drift around to get to the front to drive up onto it, and in that split second amount of time, a lot of times you're gonna get stuck or you're gonna get frozen by an enemy and you can get killed easily. So yeah, I've never been a fan of these charging bridges. If they were to bring them back in a future game, just have a bridge on both sides so it's like a four-way ramp that you can get up onto this charging pad. That's all they need to do and it would be much better. And my last point for the bad for Twisted Metal Black is that some rain, snow, and of course motion blur effects can make it really difficult to see at times. And this is even more apparent if you're playing on like an old CRT TV like back in the day when you didn't have HDMI or any of these new LCD displays. 
Whenever those motion blur effects came into play, you literally could not see two feet in front of your vehicle. I don't know if this was by design and it might have been to ramp up the difficulty, but for most players, it just becomes more of a frustration than anything. And especially if you're playing on levels like Zorko Bros with the rain effects, or if you're on snowy roads and the blizzard effects come in really hard, it can be very difficult and annoying to see at times on what's coming up in front of you. Now we're going to move into the good or what I think is personally really good about Twisted Metal Black and the reason why it's one of my favorites in the entire series. The opening menu and character selection screen is honestly just iconic. I absolutely love it every time it gets me pumped to get into the game and start up a new playthrough. The game mode selection is around Sweet Tooth's ice cream truck with the different text as if it was written in blood. Each character is frozen in time in the heat of battle which looks really cool. And if you're doing a regular like challenge mode, you can choose the level by just zooming in a Sweet Tooth's eye. I mean, it's just an absolutely iconic view and look to a character selection slash menu selection screen. The next biggest point I think most people think of with Twist Metal Black is the gameplay, the physics, and the sense of speed. I truthfully can say are almost perfected. I am a huge fan of the sense of speed of this game. I know I've heard a lot of people say they dislike this game because it feels too fast or cars accelerate too quickly. Whatever the case may be, I think it's actually a benefit to the gameplay and makes the game feel more frantic than ever before, but still to the point where you have good control of the vehicles and the physics make sense to where you don't feel like it's too wonky or out of your control as the player. I just always feel completely in control when I'm playing Twisted Metal Black, and that's why I love this game for what it is. And that fast sense of speed really makes these large levels not feel so large or like too empty or void of combat because of how fast every character is, not just yourself. Every character in this game, to me at least, feels pretty well balanced, except for Roadkill Special and Brimstones. Roadkills is just overbroken, like just broken in general. <laughs> like, all you have to do is hold down the... R2 button to let it charge up and if you let go at a certain time it can do a massive amount of damage and the funny thing is if you ever go against roadkill in the tournament mode he for some reason always hits you at that max amount of damage and it's annoying as hell whereas brimstone is on the exact opposite spectrum where his special is not only difficult to hit people with but once you do it barely does any damage anyway he should have definitely had a buff so that's really my only two gripes with the balancing in the game I know some people can make arguments for some other characters where they feel they might be too strong or too weak, whatever the case may be, but I think for the most part, everybody's pretty balanced in their own right, and cars do feel pretty different from one another versus their handling, their speed, their armor, you name it. No car feels the same as the other. I also am a huge fan of the horror and dark atmosphere. I know I said earlier that is a detriment to the game in certain ways, and I do still agree with that because I think a lot of people were really turned off when this game came out because of that overly serious and horror aesthetic, and of course the mature rating, where Twist Metal 2 was way more accessible to more people, and I think that is probably the way they should probably go for a future game, is more towards that more accessible atmosphere, but there is still a deep dark part of me that loves the atmosphere and dark nature of Twist Metal Black. These stories, endings, and cutscenes, I think are all really well done. I love the sort of still motion actions with some animated sections to the stories as well as amazing voice acting and really good background music to add to the atmosphere. I think the writing is also pretty well done for the most part. I, again, I do know that some of them do overlap in terms of their overall goal and the revenge plots get kind of old, but every single one is still worth it to go through and see for yourself through the tournament. And they're a lot of fun to watch, even if they can be pretty depressing and just downright disgusting. The large levels don't feel overly large due to always fighting eight enemies at once. And of course, with that fast paced gameplay, like I stated before, but I can understand if, to some people's arguments that say like prison passage or suburbs being too big of levels, I, I can agree to that. But for the most part, in my opinion, I think the levels are just big enough and they do fit the gameplay overall. The difficulty feels pretty balanced for the most part as long as you're playing on medium, but it can be honestly bullshit if you ever play on hard. Because if you play on hard, you get even larger enemy health pools, less heals available in general, so you can only use one of those full health bridges, and also the health pickups that I stated before that gave you basically no health, guess what? On hard, they even give you less health, so they're literally useless. 
So in my opinion, hard mode is just overly brokenly hard and there's no reason to ever play on it. This is a big point and I should have honestly probably stated this off at the beginning, but the graphics. This game is absolutely gorgeous and it still stands up to this day. I might be a little biased, I probably am, but I do think Toast Mobile Black is one of the best looking games on the PS2 and still to this day. I also really am a huge fan of the color of certain missiles that really contrast the dark atmosphere. Uh, yes, I understand and I agree that the dark color palette does get old and drab after a while for sure, but I do think it actually does help in a lot of ways with the contrast of the bright colors of like the homing missiles, the fire missiles, the gas canisters, you name it. Any of the missiles you use in this game look just insanely gorgeous and they look like a firework going off during the heat of battle. And kind of talking about that leading into there's a lot of small details that I really like about Twisted Metal Black including the different compartments that hide the weapons for every single character is very expertly crafted and it just gives you a more unique look to each vehicle when you play as them in the game. I also like when you destroy a vehicle, you see the driver running around on fire when they're killed and if you hit them, you can actually gain back some health, which is a cool little feature. And also some cars have secret special weapons to find as well. I won't get into all of them here, but just for an example, if you use Crazy 8, just by general, if you use your special, it just electrifies the enemy and it doesn't do that much damage and a lot of people might write him off as a terrible character. However, if you triple tap one of the directional pads in the direction of the character you're about to fight, rapidly tap the L2 button to use your special weapon, you can do an insane amount of damage with his taser. And that's just one of the cool ways you can find different things to do with your special weapon that some other characters also have hidden within the game. The original soundtrack is also incredibly haunting and beautiful. It's very riveting and it really makes your blood pump like crazy during like boss battles or if you're just in the heat of battle. And then they also have a lot of atmospheric soundtracks that cut in whenever you're away from the action for a little bit, which I think is really a neat touch. Yes, this was implemented in Twist Metal 1 way back in 1995, but I think they perfected it here and I absolutely adore the soundtrack. The creativity of the character and car designs. I mean, that's this is a huge point and a big reason why people really remember Twist Metal Black. I mean, Crazy 8 was an amazing addition with no face. It doesn't really make any sense how he can even drive a car, but who fucking cares? He looks badass. Sweet Tooth's mech vehicle. Yes, it's kind of over the top and he might be a little overpowered. I will admit that, but God damn, he's just super cool, a lot of fun to play, and I have really no issues with Sweet Tooth, and he's by far my favorite design in the entire series. Dark Side's design, I love the car in front of the semi. It just looks super like gritty, and it just fits Twisted Metal so well. Warthog's design is probably one of my favorite vehicle designs in the entire series. Axel's design is just super brutal with his legs dragging across the ground. Brimstone, I mean, with the, with the squirming body on the front of the car that you shoot out, to then blow up and repent on other vehicles. It, the list goes on. There's a lot of creativity in the character design here and you gotta give him credit for that. Special weapons actually feel pretty useful this time around and they're really fun to master. Some of them are kind of hard to use at the beginning, but once you get used to them and you figure out, like I stated with Crazy 8s for instance, different ways to use the special weapons, you can do a lot of damage with them in this game and they do feel really unique from one another. Except for Brimstone. I don't know why his sucks so much. They added a lot of new weapons this time around as well, like the reticle, satellite, gas can, and zoomy are all powerful in their own right, and they're all really fun to use. I don't really have any gripes with any of the weapons in Twisted Metal Black. There's lots of secrets, character unlocks, and level unlocks found in almost every level throughout the tournament, which makes replayability very strong. I mean, just as one example, in the very first level in the tournament, if you shoot a fire missile or a homing missile at the right time, you can shoot down a plane from the sky that opens up a whole other section to the level that unlocks Yellow Jacket. That is just such a cool and unique aspect to Twist Metal Black that I really loved to see return in Twist Metal Small Brawl, and I really would hope to see return in a new game as well. I like when the developers give the gamer a chance to kind of explore around these levels and find secrets that they may have never known for years of playing the game, and just being able to unlock different characters that way is really a fun aspect. And then just unlock minion is nothing crazy, it's just play throughout the entire game with every character and unlock all of their ending cutscenes and there, now you can play as minion. I think that's a great way to do it because it, again, gives you a huge incentive to go through the game with every single character. I also really love that lives reset on every single level. 
So for instance, if you were to die two times on the first level in the tournament, but you were to complete it and get to the second level, but now look at that. You have three more lives to continue into the tournament, and I just absolutely love that. It makes it feel so much more rewarding to make it to the next level. And on top of that, you can even retry from said level if you are to lose all of your lives, making the experience feel overall more fair compared to the older games. Where if you were to lose all three of your lives throughout the tournament, you'd have to either restart from the beginning or use a level password, which again, I've always just felt like it doesn't feel right. It feels like you're supposed to restart from the beginning because they don't let your lives reset after each level. The homing and fire missiles, I have to say, they actually feel accurate this time around. The homing missiles especially, like when you shoot one of those, it's very rare when they miss their target. I do like that other things can also interfere in the path of said missile. So if there's other random NPC vehicles driving around, they can actually take the hit for you, thus protecting the enemy from your missile. And it adds more to the gameplay and realism. And I just absolutely love that fire missiles don't just feel brokenly stupid. Like there's so many Twist Metal games where fire missiles, for me at least, I almost never use them because they miss 90% of the time because they just don't home in enough. And I think Twisted Metal Black pretty much perfects fire missiles and homing missiles, in my opinion. And one last little thing I want to add to my favorites list here of why I love Twisted Metal Black is Snowy Roads. It's just a beautifully gorgeous level. It stands out with its white aesthetic and moody atmosphere more than any other one in the entire game. I don't know whose design was Snowy Roads, but I want to just give them an extra round of applause because... It's got my favorite song in the entire game. It's just so moody, atmospheric, haunting is the best way to describe it. And of course, just that white aesthetic of being up on a snowy mountain is just kind of uneasy, but at the same time, just really cool. And it again, it stands out. It refreshes your palette in a way because it just is not that gray, dreary, dark atmosphere we're so used to with every other level in the game. So yeah, Snowy Rose is just more than enough of a reason to play through Twisted Black just to reach that level. So that is essentially it of my major points of why I love Twisted Metal Black, and I think I always will. I totally understand why there's people who dislike this game or they don't think it's the best in the series, and that's totally fine. I also do not think it's the best game in the series. I've made a whole video of me ranking every Twisted Metal if you want to go check that out. But with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section below of what you think of Twisted Metal Black. If you love it or you hate it, let me know why. But with that, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and we'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace out, everybody. Thank you guys so much for making it to the end of the video. Before we head out, I want to give a huge special thank you to our channel members. These are amazing people who are wanting to support the channel and the content here. And if you want to do the same, you can click the little join button underneath every single new upload. And a becoming channel member not only supports me and the channel, but also gives you a ton of perks in doing so, including early access to new content and being a part of exclusive polls and information that other people would not be able to access. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you again so much for the love and support, and we'll hopefully see you in the next one. Peace out.